June's numbers are in. We're halfway through the year in the Myrtle Beach real estate market. And today we're going to be looking at those data points year to date up until June. So that way you can have the best information if you are looking to buy or sell here in the Myrtle Beach area. You know, there's still so much fear mongering out there amongst the media. So as always, as we're looking at the data year to date, we will go beyond and put some actual context behind all that data so that as you are deciding to make a purchase or to sell a property here locally in the greater Grand Strand area throughout the Myrtle Beach area, you will have the best information at hand so that you can feel comfortable and confident in the decision that you ultimately make. So let's go ahead. We're going to share my screen. We're going to pull up the data points as we are in June. And of course, the first thing everyone wants to know when I'm talking with a buyer or seller is what are the values? What is the price point? What is my entry level to get in? So as we look at both single family homes and condominiums, these are going to be resale properties. Of course, we're excluding new construction in there. And this is going to be for the entire greater Grand Strand area. You can see that, well, boy, right here, the, uh, Year over year, we're actually up nearly 6% in values for the median sales price for single family homes. And we're up greater than 16% for condominiums. Now here's what gets most interesting is if we look right at December and we carry that through month over month, well, we can see of course for single family homes, it's really been relatively flat sitting at a median sales price of $360,000. And this is right at about kind of our, our base price point. If I'm talking with you as a buyer and you're looking to get into a home here throughout Myrtle, the Myrtle Beach area, kind of our baseline is right in the, in the 335 to 350, 360, kind of right in that circling, right in that area where you are going to find the majority of homes. And of course, getting under uh, 330 is where it does become a, a bit of a challenge. Now, we can also see if we, again, as always, put some context into that. If we go all the way back to January 2020, well, that's where we can see we continue to see an increase, though over the last six months, we are certainly trending in a median sales price values that have been relatively flat. Now, as we drop down to the condominium market, really about the same story. Though you can see if we hit December, they we were right at the end of the year, the median sales price was 225,000 and that has slowly creeped up uh, to where it is at 232,500 now for uh, the month of June. Okay, so let's talk more about what is affecting the market. Of course, the biggest uh, factors in the market right now, as I mentioned, if you're looking to get under say that, $325,000, $330,000 price point, you know, in the low threes does become very complicated. And we can see that new homes available for sale continue to drastically decline. These are new properties coming on the market. And of course, people ask me, well, why are there so few properties coming to the market if, you know, if values are still holding relatively strong? And of course, the answer for that is, so many people who either purchased in 2020, 2021, or even into 2022, right? They were able to capitalize on those significantly low interest rates or even refinance. So of course, so many people are saying, hey, we're going to sit in the home that we're at based on those interest rates. As we look at the condominium market, the same thing the number of new condos and single family homes continues to significantly decrease, which just may be a bit of our saving grace. Because as we look at homes for sale, well, we can see that that continues in an upward trajectory year over year. We're actually up nearly 50% for single family homes. We are up 80% 
uh, for condominiums. So these are the total number of properties on the market continues to increase. Well, why is that? What does that mean? That means that homes that are on the market are simply taking longer to sell or they're not selling at all. These are very important factors to look at. As a matter of fact, if we go to the days on market, as I've mentioned in just my last video, market update video, we can see that those days on market continue uh, to increase, right? Currently, if you are a seller as a single family home or as a condominium owner, you can expect right in the 60 day time frame to, to sell a property. If we look at the average for that, it actually increases to about 80 to 85 days on the market. So if you are planning out from a timing perspective, when to sell, how long is it going to take me to sell? I would prepare for anywhere between 60 to 90 days. So two to three months you can expect by the time that you get a home under contract to be sold. Very important as you're planning out uh, your, your sales process. Now, if we looked at pending sales, then we can see that pending home sales too continue to decline. So less properties going under contract, fewer properties going under contract for sale. If we look at closed sales data, same story, fewer closed properties uh, year over year were actually down just nearly 30% for single family homes and right at 30% for condos and townhomes. If we then go to our months of supply, of course, these numbers are starting to come together. We can see sales pricing remaining flat, yet the new listings are, are down at the same rate that properties are staying on the market. And well, we look at months of supply currently at 2.5 months or so two and a half months for single family homes and just shy of that for townhomes. Now, again, I want to put some context behind this. We know that a normal market for months of supply is anywhere between four to six months of supply. As we get to six months and above, that's where we now become a buyer's market. And of course, anything below four months is still a seller's market. So if we go back into the 2020 timeframe, well, we can see right there, we were essentially peeking into that buyer's market, right? It was a neutral market heading into the direction of a buyer's market. And then, of course, as we got into uh, early 21, March, we all know what happened there. And then, of course, that's when homes were selling like crazy. So we can see that we are trending back more towards that normal market. Slowly but surely, it's going up a tenth of a percentage uh, from that standpoint. So also very important to look at. Now, if we look at, again, if you are a seller understanding and planning, how much can I get? How long is it going to take me? And what is it going to take to get my home sold? Well, we know that it's taking currently 10 showings per listing for a property to go under contract. And well, it's at seven showings per uh, listing for the property to go under contract. Knowing that it is taking, that we're currently seeing, well, about half of those numbers as far as showings per listing. Okay, so again, that comes to timing on the market. And as you're preparing or while you're on the market, knowing that, well, if I've had three showings, you know, for the past two weeks, well, I know that I still need, you know, seven more in order to obtain a an offer based on those numbers. So as always, you know, now more than ever, who you work with matters. We want to be a resource for you in the event that you want to buy or sell. If you want more information for your particular neighborhood, 
your particular needs or wants if you're purchasing in the Myrtle Beach area? Well, you know, it's simple. All you got to do is give me a call, shoot me a text, send me an email, whether it's in the next nine days or 90 days, we'll help you with that smooth move here to the beach. And well, until next time, I look forward to seeing you around the beach.